Hello everyone. People often talk about the first few lines of a play as setting the scene for what will follow. Now the same could be applied to the ministry of Jesus. His opening words are, in his public ministry, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. Now this sets the scene for what is to come. His mission was to usher in the kingdom of God, but if we're to be part of it, ongoing repentance needs to be high on our agenda. To me, there are only two types of people in the gospel, the contrite of heart, like, say, Zacchaeus or Mary Magdalene and others, and the unrepentant who hardened their hearts against Jesus and had him crucified. Now, repentance is something we could easily put on the back burner. For Catholics, it, is no it normally involves the confession of sins to a priest in private confession. This, of course, is mandatory for serious sins, and people seem to be forgetting that these days. But we must prepare for this moment, this confession, by a detailed analysis of the way we live our lives against the backdrop of the commandments, the gospel and the church's teaching. Repentance affects the core of our being. It's not just a matter of trotting our way into confession and telling the priest, put me down for two of this and three of that and I'll be in again, surely, a couple of weeks' time with the same list. Repentance is how we understand reality, whether we view others as objects to be used or people to be loved. It involves seeing everyone as our brothers and sisters in Christ. It involves following Jesus faithfully, not just as a fair weather Christian, but also when our faith in God is stretched or tested. Repentance means putting aside cynicism, which is a sort of unacknowledged atheism. It's calling a sin a sin and not camouflaging it or muddying the water for our own convenience. Real conversion of heart will mean that in making moral decisions we will have recourse to objective moral standards as outlined in scripture and taught in the Catechism and the Sacred Magisterium and not act merely on personal feelings or on, the, or on the advice of people with limited knowledge of the Church's teaching on many moral issues. The first apostles didn't know what they were letting themselves in for when they left their nets to follow Jesus, as we heard in today's Gospel. The question is, what do we need to let go of in order to become more ardent followers of his? Unlike evangelical Christians, and I have nothing against the evangelicals, they believe that repentance is a one-off born-again experience. But we Catholics are much more realistic, and we believe that it is ongoing through life. St. Francis de Sales, for instance, whose feast we celebrated on Friday, said it took him 20 years to overcome his intermittent bad temper. So there you have it. Some people will try putting us off listening to God or our conscience. The tempter told Adam and Eve, for instance, that if they eat the forbidden fruit, they will not die, but on the contrary, become God's equal, knowing good and evil. They swallowed the bait and were sent packing from paradise. When our friends tell us that something which used to be a sin is not a sin anymore, in our naivety we may be persuaded to believe them. They're playing the tempter's game and repentance is not part of his agenda. Our Lord says we must be wise as serpents and simple as doves. Only the contrite of heart will enter the kingdom. Ongoing repentance is good for us, good for our families, and indeed good for society at large. 
Without it, our following of Jesus is hardly going anywhere. Thank you all very much for listening. God bless you all. Oh.